Welcome back. Today we're going to do a quick one on the Tipsy Trumpso. So this set came out a couple years ago. I think it was 2022. I remember reading some impressions of it a couple years ago. I thought, hey, that's pretty cool. They have a cool name for the company. I think they actually got the name. This is a Norwegian city, which they got the, I think that's actually typoed. I think it's Tromsø with one T, but eh, close enough. Those of you who are familiar with EPZ, I think this is their handiwork before we knew them as EPZ. So this blue shell, I think, is very reminiscent of the Q1 Pro. I think it's kind of the same style builds, but this one says Tromsø on the side. But very nice and, um, you know, no real complaints there. I think the cable as well. I think people complained a couple of years ago. This was a thin and tangly one. But, you know, as far as a, you know, something that you don't see every day, a unique blue sleeve cable, maybe it's a little bit thin, but I don't quite like it. I'm a fan of the nice HCK Red AG, which is just a slightly thicker version in red of this style cable. Nice zinc alloy connectors. You know, I think they got a lot of that. Packaging is quite nice. This M was included in the box. I have no idea what that is. So if someone knows what the M is for, let me know. So we'll start there. What is special about this one? It is a 12 millimeter dynamic driver. And that is this guy kind of right there. Can't yeah, get a halfway decent look at it. So 12 millimeter LCP dynamic driver. It has a smallish nozzle, which I think was actually done quite well. You kind of see the profile is a little short nozzle. The, the lip is a little bit tapered, a little bit rounded. You know, I think they got all of that right. I think it's actually a very comfortable style nozzle. Not too wide, not too tall. You know, I think they got that, that tapered, smoothed out style. I think they did that really well. Nice choice. And if you look at the graph, it looks like a really big V-shaped set. It was, but this one is really meant for low and medium volume, and we'll get to that in one second. So the sound, it, this, the graph says it's a really big V, but you really look at it at the treble level. It dominates the balance, and it really throws the emphasis right into the upper mids. You're expecting to hear a thick, muddy mids, but it's not like that at all due to the upper range level. And let's kind of take a quick peek at what's going on on the graph, and, and it looks like this. So... When I first saw it, when, when Tipsy first reached out, I, of course, went through Squig and said, you know, what does this thing actually look like? Who has graphed this before? And you see that the Trumpso in red, it looks like a big bass shelf, a nice heavy bass shelf. It's going to have plenty of mid bass. You know, it's kind of a lot of energy there. And then it's like, okay, well, they just balanced it off with some nice treble. And that's this was going to be a very fun, balanced V-shape. But when you actually put it in your ear and realize, you know, these this these levels of treble is actually quite a bit over the Harman target. That's a lot of energy they put out there in the upper treble and the treble in the upper treble. It's a lot. And I didn't really catch it when I, when I first looked at the graph, but yeah, when you put it in your ear and it definitely takes on a very much a low to medium at most volume because of how much energy and kind of how peaky it is. And again, C2 was one of those sets that was quite bright for a lot of people. It was bright for me. And this is even brighter, so much more of a, a lower volume set, but they threw in a really heavy bass curve, so you get a lot of bass at a low volume, which I thought was actually very interesting. Probably the most interesting part about this set is how much bass you get um, at low volume. So speaking of bass, again, even for a 12 millimeter dynamic driver, I think it sounds a little bit dated in 2024. I wouldn't say it. it's especially the quality is especially high or it's super impactful or super rumble super sub bass I, I think it's okay i think it's kind of okay kind of borderline for 2024 but you know it's really hard to get a big dynamic driver sound at lower volume and this one fills in the mids when you play with the volume and i think they got that right and uh, sort of the, it's the hardest part about this set to understand is how the guy actually tuned this so there you have quite a heavy bass presence at a low volume and you're playing with the volume to get the treble to fall in place with the bass. It's um, kind of a magic trick of how he actually pulled this off. And, and again, it's kind of the, the most interesting part about this set. I'm not all that interested about the rest of it, but how he actually tuned it to get it to the point where it sounds very, very good at, at one specific volume, you know, a very small range that's very low. How he pulled that off, I have no idea, but uh, I thought it was very interesting. And you just don't often see a really a heavier bass set that was tuned for lower volume. So again, this one was more of a curiosity for me than something that I would grab every day. The mids, and, and this is mostly a volume balancing act. It will quickly get harsh because of that high level of treble. 
too much volume will push it right right into harsh super quick. It isn't hard to find where the tuner's volume was because you'll hear where the bass and the treble are very pleasing levels. Anything above that and it gets harsh super quick and you'll kind of realize exactly where he was tuning this, exactly why he picked that bass shelf to complement that treble level of where it is. Um, very, very narrow range on volume of where this thing sounds. Perfect for how he tuned it. But straight from that point, and it will go off balance and get too bright very quickly. Again, this is very much an interesting way it can sound. So upper range heavy, but at the right volume, the bass sits right alongside the mids. Typically, it would just sound bright and thin. There's no back end, but this one, is, I, mean, I would say it's not perfect, but the way he got the balance of the treble and the, the bass, so they actually complemented each other and you could hear both at the right volume, I thought that was actually done quite well and perhaps better than even C2. C2 was sort of this, it's too bright, it's too thin, it's super sharp. This is more of a balance set, but it's balanced at a very low volume. So yeah, kind of interesting. If you push the volume too far, it definitely will go bright and thin on you. And the treble, it leans very hard into the treble end, and those peaks will hit you without turning the dial much. At the right volume, it sounds more like a V-shape, not a set that is too bright. Really tough to pull off this kind of tuning with dynamic driver and the low volume. And even if you listen to low volume classical, I think the unit actually nailed that pretty good. But yeah, it's a, a super interesting thing to listen to as far as, um, you know, from a hobbyist perspective as a, who do you recommend this to? You know, people who really wanted to hear somewhat of a bass headset or a bass heavy set that wasn't so caught up on having super clean bass, but just wanted a higher level of bass at a lower volume. I think he actually nailed this one quite well. And then on stage, I think it's quite a bit of extension and all that energy in the treble. I think it actually works very well for the stage. The mid bass, which again, looks like it will fill the stage with a bunch of mud and be cloudy, doesn't really work that way. And like everything else on this one, it sounds a little bit different than a graphs. That later treble energy just tends to work better than earlier. And that's really what works here too. It could have flattened. Typically when you get sets in this price range, they really bump the, the ear gain level. So right around here, you would have a huge bump and that would actually flatten your stage. So by pushing all the energy out here, it actually ends up with a cleaner, bigger stage because there's so much energy out here and kind of that air region and those things that tend to make the sound stage sound wider and higher, that's exactly where he put a ton of energy. So yeah, stage-wise, it actually works out very well. Lower volume, the bass is under control. Like everything actually worked together. And again, it's sort of been amazing how he pulled off this tuning to get something that was actually unique and interesting. Um, and I'm not sure how many people actually caught on to this up, but, uh, yeah, lots of cool stuff going on with this one, but that's all I got on the Trumpsos. Uh, thank you guys again for tuning in and I will see you next time.